This is NHL 24. We're here on Xbox Series S. Be sure to like the video. Subscribing is great as well. So typically we just take a look at the Series X version of the game, so I thought we would mix things up a bit and see how the Series S is faring for NHL in the modern era. So what are we getting here? 1080p, 60 FPS, HDR support. You can play local, cooperative, action, competitively, you can play online, and yeah, it's just kind of the full NHL experience <laughs> with the silly stick phasing through people and all. It's kind of entertaining. Now for the Series S, obviously it is a bit of a, a resolution dip in terms of the you know, fidelity and everything like that, and it looks a lot more jagged around the edges, but it's actually a decently clean, I would say, finish and look for the game, and it has the full scale and everything like that of the experience. It's not a bad way to play, well, NHL and simulate the sport of hockey uh, from a visual standpoint. Now this is one of the rougher years in terms of the overall experience. So when going to play this one, I would highly recommend turning off as much of the crap as you can. There's this on-ice skill trainer system where I guess if you are completely hockey illiterate to every degree, uh, I, I guess that could teach you how to play. I, I think it's terrible, it's the first thing I turn off. And then they have this stupid pressure symbol on the ice where, again, they think you're an idiot and uh, can't understand when pressure is happening because, you know, it's not like you have eyes and can, like, understand in a sporting game when pressure is building. See, they have this weird obsession with just uh, shoving crap onto the screen. I, I don't understand it. It's genuinely annoying. And then we've got these ad boards that are always changing, and it's just like there's... There could be a lot going on on the screen at once, and it's kind of annoying. And then I'd also love if they could please put the broadcasting thing back in the top left corner where it belongs, as it is super annoying having that bar on the bottom of the screen. <sighs> annoying, annoying, annoying. Anyways, the gameplay-wise, it's basically the same as the previous year, except now they've added these obnoxious strobe lights at the beginning of some face-offs and stuff that, like, I think would give you, like, an epileptic episode, possibly. Uh, it's just, it's just like, this, the big thing this year is, like, we're not adding or improving things. We're just cluttering your screen with colorful crap. <laughs> that's, that's really what it is. Like, it, it's, it's genuinely the same game as the previous year, and it's just... Uh, it definitely, I would say we're in a point of, like, decline, if that makes sense. Like, the series basically was rebooted with NHL 15, and that was awful. And that was a long time ago now, but that was when the big reboot happened. And then the series built itself back up, added all the modes that were missing. It improved itself. It, it, you know, they, it really did. They added all kinds of new stuff and features, which we'll get into and talk about. And then we're at a point where they've kind of been, for, for kind of a couple of years now, just sort of coasting, and if anything, it kind of feels like it a bit of a decline in terms of functionality and features because the game just isn't really evolving. They're not really adding anything new, and it's, it's just stagnating in the worst of ways, where, aside from all the colorful crap on the screen, you wouldn't really be able to differentiate uh, the, the NHL games between year to year, which... I mean, there's only so much you can do, I guess, but still, it's, uh, I don't know. And then for, like, multiplayer stuff, there's still an over-reliance on poke checking and one-timers, which they refuse to ever fix. And, yeah. So they have improved uh, a lot of the AI in terms of, like, understanding of movement, uh, shifting of positions. I still find sometimes the passing is a bit, like, nonsensical, where the puck gets sent. But they have done, over the last couple of years here, strides towards making the transitional plays of offense, defense. Defense, the offense, and the uh, middle zone, 
like the mid area of the ice, uh, the transitionary elements of hockey have improved uh, quite a bit, which is kind of nice. But it's, it's just sort of really, you know, they, they haven't really done anything new on stuff, and it's just kind of annoying. So gameplay wise, a bunch of different modes. Uh, we've got the cross platform play, and let's let's just dive in and, and talk about the different modes that are present. So there's exhibition, which is like play now. I'm gonna talk about these flashing lights. It's so obnoxious. It's worse than some <laughs> some teams than others. So yeah, it's the exhibition mode play now is where you just jump in, you play matches. It's got a lot of teams. Some different leagues and it just allows you to play customizable matches really quickly which is again where i primarily spend my time playing the nhl games when i want to just jump in have some matches and have some fun so from there you're able to do seasons you know you can kind of sit there and do like a big dynasty you can manage a team in certain ways you know, there's be a pro mode where you pick your custom character and you basically work in a career and th that mode honestly needs uh, a lot of work because it's just it's it's also like stagnated and stuff and there was a little bit ago where they kind of overhauled it a bit, but it still is a little, a little rough to dive into. Uh, we've also got your, like, I don't know if this would really count as offline, but there's your ultimate team where it's like the trading cards and everything like that. You know, that's a big moneymaker thing for EA. Some people are really into that, so if that's your sort of thing, obviously that is present here again. Then we've got, you're supposed to keep skating against me. Anyway, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I digress. So yeah, you got your ultimate team. There's different like tournament setups, and then we move on to the multiplayer. So the multiplayer, the traditional quick matches, jump in, play against others. Then there is things such as like the world of Chell, which incorporates like your EA EA SHL. So you have like teams and stuff and kind of compete as teams with your friends and whatnot. Threes, where it's like, you know, three on three. There's stuff with the mascots. There's ones, which is like 1v1v1, and it's like a battle royale setup. Kind of wish they would ditch the battle royale concept and just go back to regular ones, but mm, it doesn't really matter too much, I suppose. And then there's some other competitive kind of modes within that. Because basically, the world of Chell, you're creating your own player and making your own moves for whatever reason this year for the first time ever my last name is offensive so I I guess I should have had a different last name and uh, yeah <laughs> I, I guess my last name is offensive and now I put to try to fix that a hyphen which makes it look more offensive <laughs> than not being at all and it's just kinda like huh Thanks, yeah. So yeah, with your world of Chell, you kind of open the uh, the loot box uh, hockey bags, and you get like equipment from your various teams, and that's a whole thing on itself. Honestly, the world of Chell was really refreshing when they added it many, many years ago, and they just kind of like lightly changed things since. But it's basically the same sort of thing so that hasn't really changed it's just like I really you know I'm hard-pressed this year to really find genuinely unique changes and evolutions to the NHL experience which I think is ultimately a bit of a disappointment because you know it is a series you want to see Kind of evolve and change and it's like the nhl games used to be like really quite the top of like sports titles during like the 360 era and somewhere along the way they lost their way and it just you know they changed this or that here or there but it really does feel like the most budget budget of sports games because it just doesn't really like evolve or 
it, it just doesn't change in very exciting ways. And there, there was a time where they were building and doing lots of new cool stuff with the series a number of years ago, and then it just seems like that output has kind of quit again. And, uh, yeah, that is disappointing. I am glad that we are out of the whole NBC broadcasting package of some of those Canadian. That era of NHL drove me uh, batty, <laughs> for sure. Uh, I guess some other things, physics-based contact, which they kind of always had, but I guess it's evolved. You know, you can break the glass and throw players into the bench, which seem like pretty basic hockey things. Uh, I guess going forward, it would mostly be like player intelligence and the smoothness of the kind of like the cinematics like there's this weird change where they have these like ridiculous over-the-top celebration shots and stuff whereas like I kind of want to just see the the goal that happened and stuff like it gets it's really ridiculous there's also this really big change visually between the ice with like HDR on and HDR off you didn't know which really looks weird because they do the cinematic things at like 30 fps and they're like these ridiculous over the top segments and they look like they're hdr infused uh, in terms of like the ice design and it looks it's like a very stark contrast it also seems like a lot of the presentation type things were toned down a lot this year in terms of like being able to see things and just yeah it's, it's kind of like the replays and whatnot just aren't as good this year they're streamlined in a less than satisfying kind of way which is a bit disappointing but yeah it's at least they, they fixed the cape issue so there was like the jerseys were capes for years on years and it definitely seems like in the cutscenes they're a little bit better the the cinematics though they're really like kind of choppy and, and whatnot still too it's it's a weird situation honestly like i you know i've been playing these nhl games for like two decades at this point <laughs> like i've I've seen the change, that's actually before doing this video, I was playing NHL 07, of all things, kind of going back to it. And it is a little weird how actually little things have changed over, you know, that many years. Which is kind of funny, but... Yeah, because that was the first one that did the skill stick, and where basically the controls have not really changed that much at, at all since. But I, I always come back, and I, I love my yearly review and look at the NHL games. I'm sure as long as I be, you know, doing videos and stuff like this, this is going to be a series that I am covering, I guess you would say. Like, yeah. It's like when I was a kid kind of picking them up uh, at the store every year when they would come out. It's, it's an interesting kind of offering. So we've got like all the different modes, and we got the world of Chell, and it's it's mostly, again, probably the closest we've ever seen between like NHL releases in terms of like features and functionality. Like there's really nothing here that is new of value other than just dipping your screen with as many intrusive on ice kind of interactions that they can, which is just really annoying. <laughs> like. Like, super, super annoying. But yeah, it's a complete hockey game. It plays fine, I guess. I, you know? Like, it's okay. And it's, it's nice to take a look at it on the Series S, finally, because, as I said, we... Like, I don't... I've actually never covered this on Series S, only Series X. You know, I go in, I do my review, and then kind of move on each year, so we're really mixing things up. So I'm just gonna leave some uh, non-commentary gameplay at this point going forward, just so you can see more of it in action, but I think I well, covered everything I had to say. Michael. 
The Capitals are across the line and into the offensive end. Turned aside with the glove by Jari. Protus gets set for the face-off here as they will continue to play shorthanded. The Penguins win the defensive zone face-off. Here's a short pass. It's a two-on-one. What a save! Oh, my goodness! I thought they had it there up the rush. Washington's penalty killers deliver a huge effort to keep that one goal lead intact. The next shift is critical, James. They had the opportunity on the power play to get back in it and get the equalizer. Now they're down by one, so they have to manage some energy here, and they have to dictate pace and get back in the game. Oh, he made the save! How did he stop it? I have no idea, James. I mean, he was down and out, but profound athleticism and desperation got him back in to make it. And as play continues, this pace is still buzzing, and they're coming loud here now. Well, this is all about fan appreciation for that huge save. And, man, does this ever feel good. You know, you feel it right through you when you know you've made that big save. And everyone around you is appreciative. Crosby's got it to the side. Here's a shot. My goodness, what a stop with the glove. Washington's got it along the wall. Picked up along the boards by Ovechkin. To the low slot. Takes a shot. There's the save. Great pressure with the stick. Oh, and another big stop. Lee's out battling his opponent right now. He is so dialed in. He's trapped in the puck, making save after save. It's about time his team starts working in front of him. Shot. Swatted away with the blocker by Lindgren. Pittsburgh's got possession here in the offensive zone. And he'll likely feel that one. Pittsburgh's got a hold of it along the wall. And that's blocked from someone in front. I was never expected to score, James, so this never really bothered me. I was always on the defensive side of it. But listen, the goaltenders had to make some huge save. Everyone's talking about the chances. How about the tenders and their positioning and the ability to move within the net? Puck grab by oh. Cole. Pittsburgh's moving it into the offensive end. Great heads up play with the stick by Edmondson. Jostles the puck loose. And now it's grabbed by Wilson. Through the neutral zone up along the wing. Under a minute to play in this dandy. With the backhand! We'll get a face-off after the puck stays covered up. The Capitals lead it late in this third period. McMichaels won the face off deep inside the offensive zone. Great use of the stick here at center ice. Takes a hit, he goes down to the ice and coughs up the puck. Pittsburgh's looking to break out. And they continue to fight for that puck along the wall. Slides the puck ahead to Druden. Quick pass to Bemstrom. The Penguins carry it along the wall. And that goes off a player. Jari's made his way quickly to the bench and the extra time for the The sea of red has come to life once again for the Flames here in Calgary. The Flames take possession here on the opening draw, and we are underway. Routine gloves stopped by Grubauer. In front of the net, the goaltender covers up for a whistle on the play. We're still in the early stages of this period, still looking for our first goal. Beniers has won the draw inside his own end. Oh, and a great hits up play to force the turnover by Backlund. Dunn's moving the puck through his own zone. And he loses control here. Oh, and a good heads up defensive play. Routine pass saved made by Markstrom. Oh, and he makes another save. You can certainly tell that the goaltender is dialed in on that last sequence of saves, James. He's to position, so he finds a way to make multiple saves back to back. Looking to make something happen along the boards. Here's a chance. Comes up with a big loss save. Goaltender covers up. We got a stoppage in play. Right. 
Winbert's won the draw in his own end. Now let's see if they can clear it. And now he moves it quickly to Burakovsky. Puck scooped up by Winberg. 